Alrighty, welcome back to the jungle. Gonna be playing Belveth versus J4. Pretty easy matchup, I think. You can dodge his uh, EQ with your Qs, or you can flash it. And once he misses that, you're well, he's screwed. Um, if you don't ramp up in the early game, though, that's where you really run into trouble. As it should be, though, J4 is a noob champ designed to beat down people early. So if you mess up your steps, well, you're not gonna be strong enough, and it feels like you're. It feels like the auto attacks don't even do damage to J4. Like in the mid game, if you're losing like that. For the runes here, we have PTA, Triumph, Alacrity, Coop. This will give us more ganking and invading power. If you look at the enemy champions, um, they don't really participate in extended fights, so I'd rather opt into having that PTA so we have more burst damage. So that we can just single one person out, get a pick, and kind of move on from there. One thing with PTA too is that it gives you the bonus damage whenever you proc it, but it also gives you this exposed damage, 8% increased damage from all sources. So that's going to increase our allies' damage whenever we go for a gank as well. Enemy bot lane is pushed in, so we'll just go ahead and path topside. Even though we did our three camps down here, it will be fine. As I finish my topside camps too, it will put me in a position to gank mid or top lane. Neither one um, needs to be ganked early, since they're both kind of scaling lanes, honestly. So I have all the time in the world to get level 4 here. Especially where I know J4 is pathing bot side. A lot of people ask me why I use that E so early. Yeah, it deals more damage whenever the camp is lower. But if you use the E earlier, then it comes up again sooner. I got two more camps to do, Bob. So as many E's as I can get off, the better. So like, check it out. Pull these two together. And then my second E. Big. It finishes the blue buff, we'll hit level 4. Then as we enter the river, I have that option to gank mid or top lane. Now since I know J4 started in his red side, um, I'm going to ping bot lane to be careful. But it also gives me a lot of leniency to move into his jungle pretty freely. Let's go ahead and gank mid. This guy is super, super low. Now since Ari's so low, we want to save our Qs, walk right into her, and then check it out, Bob. We're going to Q, auto, and then Q, E. Get stunned. Oh! Close. There we go, the Arcane Comet. Plus, plus the exposed damage. Nine extra damage from PTA, actually. That was good by Ari to save her charm. I could have flashed over it, then used the E. That would have been much cleaner. But I was pretty certain that we were going to have enough damage. Alrighty, let's help Mr. Jax crash here. I used my E, which was a mistake on the scuttle. So I don't have as much oomph to this play. Let's see if Riven's a noob. Jax is making it pretty obvious. Q. Q, W. Aww. Oh. Q, auto E. Close. Now Riven's within dive range and she doesn't have TP, so we're just going to attempt this bad boy. She already used her flash, so that makes things simple for us. Go ahead and move past the wave. Q. And remember, she has two dashes here. W. Auto E. Well, we didn't kill her, but honestly, it might be worse for her that we didn't. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take these Krugs and reset. I need these bad boys for Noon Quiver. It's not ideal, but here we are. We spent so much time ganking. Auto Q Smite. Auto. And then we're going to get the small Krugs here. Q E. No problem. Noon Quiver, and we'll just clear right back up to the top side in the same way. I'll hold on to warding. No, I'll get... I'll get the sweeper. Sweeper control ward. And then off we go. Recently they changed it where you can't build the Doran's Blade anymore. So it's pretty much always going to be aiming for that Noon Quiver on the first reset. So that we get that increased clear speed. 30 AD, 15% attack speed, and 20 extra damage on hit to the jungle camps. Alrighty. Bot lane. Bot lane's kind of gankable. Let's do this before the gank. Because J4 should have just taken the Void Grubs by now. Looking to attack the Senna here, but we could also probably kill Tom Kinch. E. Stun onto Tom Kinch. Auto Q. Auto Q. Q. Auto. W. Q. E. Nice. Well, Pike gets the kill. Maybe it's not too nice. Alrighty, then we just keep terrorizing the bot lane here. Because we can take this guy's Gromp, or we can dive... We can't dive Senna. Never mind. Just a Gromp for me. Damn, they land the 
hook, but I'm not there. J4 is entering my blue side. That's good for us. He's not going to be able to kill my top lane. Now, Bob, that's a whole top Kench, and they have mid lane coming, so I got to get these camps while I can, or else I'm never hitting level 6. I do Gromp, Wolves, Scuttle, and then very close to level 6. Meanwhile, we know J4 is in this blue side. So splitting the map like that, I kind of just find myself there, but it ends up working out. Because J4 is not level 6 yet, so it's much harder for him to gank my solo lanes. Even though we get a kill too, it's not about the objective here. It's not about getting dragon. You really don't have to worry about dragon until you're like level... Until it's like 11 minutes in game for Belveth. Up until that point, you probably are better suited spending your time farming or ganking or invading, doing some sort of play. Clean up these red side camps and see... See what the map gives us. Now with level 6, you know that we don't have an ulti with Belveth, but if we get a kill or assist, we get that form. That gives us much more playmaking potential. Wow, they kill Ari. Holy shit. Alrighty, let's reset. We did our play, we invaded, back to our camps, farm, no play, let's reset, get back onto the map, J4 is going to be playing for Dragon, and all we have to do is really stop him. So another control ward, um, dagger and crit cloak, and then to the bot side here. The next void grubs are in two minutes, those will give us the empowered form. Um, but, so until then, I think I could just keep attacking this bot lane. Right now, too, it's like I'm level 6, those top laners and mid laners are going to be level 7, so... At least I'm fighting an even battle against the enemy bot laners, where they're level 6 as well. On into the river. Alrighty, into bot lane. The R didn't walk into me in river, so that gives me enough leniency to get into the bot lane now. So my goal here with this whole these whole maneuvers is to have impact, have tempo over the enemy and then try to capitalize on any mistakes the enemy is making. The pings were wrong, Bob! The Ari was mid lane, what's the deal? We all respected that ping. Hook on the Senna, but who can follow up? Plink. Plink. Nobody's dying today, eh? Q, W. Q, E. Nice. The big man goes down. The River King. Man, those danger pings were so lame. If you're the type of player that danger pings every fucking play that happens, do me, do everyone a favor and shut the fuck up. That don't help nobody. Alright, to the Void Grubs, Bob. It's time to get that Empowered Form. And then, Empowered Form, Kraken Slayer level 7, that's when we really, really take over. We got these minor advantages, whole bunch of fucking assist. Now it's time to actually get some juice here for ourselves. J4 has a Brutalizer and a Tiamat. Okay. Yes, and he makes the mistake of showing mid. Hook. QQ, flash. EQN, WQ, auto E. Nice, he's so screwed. He's so screwed. I get the level up. I get the gold. I just need a couple of these Void Grubs and I get the gold for Kraken Slayer too. It's over, Bob. It's over in the sense that I'm going to surpass the J4 now. I'm going to have more ganks, more clear speed, and more objective control. Because if he ever tries to start the objective, what's so good about the empowered form for Belveth is that it gives you the Q where you can dash over the walls. By dashing over the walls, you're always in an unfair position compared to the enemy. Because if they start a fight, you can flank them. If you enter the fight from a flank, then you're in a winning position as Belveth. You can clean up the play, abilities have already been spent, or the enemy position is bad, and they can't fully attack you. Kraken Slayer, and then to the bot side. I'm only... I'm not even looking for a level up. I could clear out my camp towards Dragon. We're going to go to Dragon first because we're on a power spike. Level 7, Empowered Form, Kraken Slayer. Time to fight. Meanwhile, J4 is probably still looking for enough gold to complete that Profane Hydra. So if we exploit this time, then we can ride on in to level 11. Nice, he doesn't have Profane Hydra. Control Ward. Nice. We'll just keep this pressure up. Let's move into his jungle. 
Whoa! Whoa! Oh, EQ in, ulti. It's just too much. I'm gonna have to wait for the Xerath. This is front to back, so it's not as good. Don't know if the Ari has TP either. Phew. Alrighty, well, we tried for a play, but my bot lane threw it. The Kaiser's 1 in 3? Well played, brother. So now I can clear my camps and then react to what the enemy is doing. Main deal here is that I want to get my own personal power. They're taking Dragon. All yours. All yours. My camps are up. I won't be spending time on that one. I go level 8.5. You get a Dragon. Okay. It's neither good nor bad. I recently moved and my ping's a little lower. My ping's like 27, I'm used to playing with like 40. And the auto into buffering the Q like this, like auto Q, is much smoother. If you play on lower ping, it's simply easier and more fun to play Belvet. If not, it's still manageable, but it feels so smooth. It's like schmack, schmack Q, schmack, schmack Q, schmack, schmack Q. That smoothness is so beast. Well, let's try to find J4 in his jungle. I still have Xerath ulti, and I'm still on my power spike, except J4 has reset now, and is going to have his profane Hydra. So I'm not going to start his buff. Yeah, I am. Whoa. This is an uneven fight. Not what we were looking for. Auto, Q. Yeah, I can't tank two of you now, can I? I still have Xerath ulti, remember? If J4 EQs his red buff, then I'm really in business. Smart move. Ari's gonna try to attack me here. Flash. I can go back in though. They don't have sums. Q, W. Auto, Q, auto, auto, Q. Auto, auto. I'm so dead. Oy, oy, oy. Worth a shot, Bob. All the camps are down. Nothing to lose. Very impressively disappointing, but we did our job. Alrighty, time to get our second item here. They're all pretty tanky. That easily prompts the Blade of the Rune King for me. These bruiser items, such as Titanic Hydra, are good and all. But whenever they have, like a Tom Kinch, and then these bruiser champs like Riven and J4, a Blade of the Rune King into Eclipse is like the most... Kraken Blade and Eclipse is like the most 1v1 potential you can have in the items. They're so, so strong. And all I'm taking is 1v1s effectively. Even when I go for ganks and whatnot. Alrighty, I'm looking for the Rift Herald here. I'm not really looking for any plays. I'm going to farm my camps and then react to anything that happens on the map. But I'm not looking for anything preemptive since I don't have my empowered form. And I just did my plays. My camps have respawned. And the enemy. Okay, good hook. Alrighty, kill my bot lane, but I'm taking that Rift Herald. Are you catching the drift here, Bob? Our own personal power. For my four assist. <laughs> uh, J4 is going to have to keep it up, to be fair. With a lethality build like that. Rift Herald will give us that empowered form. It will also give us the Rift Herald itself, which will help us take a turret, open up the map, and then much easier for us to play the mid game with Pike, Belveth, trying to get picks with a enemy turret being down. As you can see, Belveth clears that bad boy in no time. Dragon's up in 140, nothing's really happening, so I'll go ahead and clear my camps and reset. Pretty slow game, but that's okay. Where I have Xerath, Kai'Sa, and Jax, they're all scaling champs, so we're in a fine spot. I'm starting to get this uh, farm ramp over the J4 too. Level 10 to his level 10. Green smite completed, I basically got a ruby crystal for free. So we're not doing too bad. Rest in peace, brother. Recurve bow back onto the map here. Until we complete the Bork components or whatever. 1200 for that. Now, moving onto the map, I have that empowered form. So I want to avoid the vision. If you go over the dragon or the barren wall, then you avoid the wards around here and around here. And that's how you use the empowered form. But check it out. Use the up and down. 
like that, and then you still have your forward cues. Still trying to react to what's happening. Of course there's a ward bob. Smack, Q. Smack, Q. Sorty, sorty, sorty. Q. Hello. Blinking. Nothing good's happening here. Holy shit, Jax is in on this in a Q. Q, W. Q, auto. Pick up that soul. Okay, okay, we killed three of them so far. Nice one. Let's go ahead and push Q, W. Auto, auto, Q, E. Nice. Nice, Bob. I don't know how it happened. The Jax made it happen, the big man. Alrighty, we're gonna take the dragon here instead of dropping the Rift Herald. And with this dragon, J4 should have got two dragons in the early game, so he's a little slow. But with this dragon, we really delay the pace of the game because he won't be able to get soul in any reasonable time. Nice, that's what I'm talking about. And now we can get the fucking Blade of the Rune King in base, and we're really talking. Champions like disgusting Tom Kinch can actually die. Frozen heart, piece of shit Tom Kinch. You know what we should do, Bob? Instead of Eclipse, check it out. Ninja Tabby into Death Dance. Look at their team comp. It's all these AD assassins and then like loser Ari. So, with Death Dance and Ninja Tabby, we'll have so much survivability. Yeah, that's going to be way better, actually. We even could have went Death Dance second, but here we are. With Bork, I definitely function as more of a carry. With a 1 in 5 Kai'Sa, that's fine. But I do have more of a responsibility to get more farm, since that's the case. More farm means more levels, and then with more levels, more carry potential. But since I'll be spending more time farming, that will take away from my opportunities to make plays in the mid game. Which is kind of a deal. Kind of a beast ass deal given the team comps and how this game's playing out. Oh, Arya's playing too many games here. Let's make her pay. Q. Q. Auto W. Close. Kick this guy's ass, it's fine. Alrighty, to the Raptors. Jax just don't care. And Tom Kinch is just dead, eh? Q, W. Q, auto, E. Q. Just in case. Flash. My E's coming back up so we can still win. The R just has so many dashes. Charm misses. Have to dodge Cinna W and Riven W. That's why it looks so awkward there, Bob. That's what we're waiting for. Just standing around waiting. Clean up the camps. The faster we clear the camps and reset, the faster we can get to the top side, do it all over again. Our clear speed's very good. Oh yeah, Bob, with Blade of the Rune King. 40 AD, 25% attack speed, 8% lifesteal. And then, the passive Mist Edge. Deal 12% current HP physical damage on hit to the, to the enemy champions. First auto attack slows. Super good dueling item. The more HP they have, the more that bad boy's dealing. Cloth Armor, Longsword, Ninja Tabby to the top side. Whenever you complete two items, that's the time to complete your tier 2 boots. You really don't need to or want to complete those, especially if you're ramping. Or losing, so basically every game state. Until you complete the second item. This Tom Kinch is eating it, man. You could have had it all. Could have had it all, but you just thrown away your mid game. Oh, my empowered form is expiring. Wow, these guys are throwing. With the Baron being up, we're looking for picks, but the enemy is kind of just giving us everything we want for free, so. Q, W. Auto, auto, Q, moving. I'm so dead. Clean him up. Come on, Zerath. Q, oh. Long sword. Once I eat that Ari charm, it's over, Bob. That's the one champion I can't get hit by. And then the Riven and the Senna were both focusing me. Phew. Oh, nice. 
Just die. He did have Medjai's, but at least the shutdown goes to Tom Kinch. Next play is going to be Dragon with the carries dead. I can farm the bot wave. I can slime a little bot wave. Yes, me get strong. Me level 13, J4 level 11. Noob. Me so good. J4 so noob. Me kill camp. Me kill minion. Me kill everything in sight. Me so good. This guy doesn't even care that I took his wave. Now the dragon doesn't matter so much. The dragon is simply an opportunity for us to have another fight, which is very good for me. And then Death Stance will be our last item, giving us armor AD. But the most important part of it is its passive, ignore pain. 30% of the damage taken to you is taken over 3 seconds instead. So that means that we won't get instant bursted whenever we go in. Their champions like Riven and J4 are all about burst. And even the magic dealing damp champions like Ari, she functions mostly through burst. And if I don't instantly die to it, then if I get a killer assist in the meantime, I can heal it all. Let's play for the fight. Play for the fight first and then look for the objective or something. Let's just go in. Q. Q. W. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. E. <laughs> Come on. Ah! Really? The Ari charm goes right past the jacks. That will show me, man. That will show me to reach like that. I thought that was a very easy play. Listen, I didn't land my W on anyone, but holy shit. Never mind. Bob, I'll tell you one thing. This is not the Bell Beth game of all time. The Senna played it well, though. She kept running. She has that Ghost Blade, Opportunity, and Boost of Swiftness, so I didn't land my fucking W. No W landed, no win. Time to farm. I'm still at level up on J4. Once I complete these camps, I'll be like halfway to level 15, but not halfway, whatever. I'll still have some XP over him. The main deal here is I need to win a fight. We win a fight, we get it all, but it's kind of at an even stalemate now that we've lost like two plays back to back. We're looking for a pick before we do the Baron here. What? Nice. Good chunk. Q, W. Auto, Q, smite. Auto, Q. Q. Jax is pushing top, so we're not fully committing. Now we should do Baron. Where Jax is crashing the bot wave, we should do Baron. This forces them to like split their focus. Really makes it hard for them. J4 is going to take this route, so the pike needs to stop him here. There he is. The eyes on that guy, that makes it a whole lot easier. Heal him. Auto, 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 E. Noob down. Powered form, maybe you can kill. Don't have to, though. Nice, Bob. That's what we were waiting for. Just one simple little win. And just like that, I'll be going level 16, and J4 will be stuck at 13. Dude, Belveth is so beast like that. Hello. Goodbye. Alrighty. Honestly, I want to split push. I think we should 1-3-1. One, one. Death Stance, and I guess a long sword. It doesn't really matter at this point. Hex Drinker could be my last item, or Wit's End. But with this completed, this makes us so much tankier, man. Especially where we went two offensive items. 30% uh, of the damage we take in 
we take is ignored for three seconds, and then if we get a kill or assist, that damage is cleansed and we heal for 87. And that makes it where we can't get one shot, and that's super overpowered, especially in combination with our E, giving us a shit ton of damage reduction. Ari, I love you. Q. Q, W. You're gonna flash, auto Q, auto, auto E. Close. Yes, red buff. <laughs> Give me that form too. Level 16, don't mind if I do. With the levels for Belvep, it's like partly our damage, but it's really mostly about our the HP that it gives us. Q. Is fine. Q. Is fine. Q. Ah! E. Is fine. They send two for me. I get a Nexus turret, that's pretty good. Guys, hit the turret, come on. If one person tanked that, we had it. Scaredy cats. My sac my sacrifice was for nothing. I just misplayed and didn't dodge his second EQ. Where I could have buffered the Q early, or even cast my E. Yeah, my team's just scared, you know. That's why it's so hard to climb, dude. Psh, 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 psh. I mean, that's like all physical damage, though. There's just not a good last item here. Oh yeah, there is. Black Cleaver. Nice. Black Cleaver gives us percentage armor pin. That'll help out the Kaisa and the Jax somewhat. I mean, we have such a magic damage heavy team comp. Alright, Bob. It's all about pushing down mid. Let's get that red buff and then go ahead and do it. They got barely a Nexus turret left. Whenever there's only one Nexus turret left, you don't have to take the side lane turrets. Or do the dragon when it's not soul point. I know. I know. Complicated stuff. I've been studying macro for years. I just want to push mid lane with my team. J4, I love you. QW. Auto. Q. Smite. Q. Auto. 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 E. Ulti. Nice. Push, 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 push. We do have the ARAM of all time here with Zera. Q. Ah, oh, come on. Q. Q, W. Q. I know, I know. Push and poke, push and poke, push and poke. Why is my support bot lane? Why does my support have a team at? Guys, 25 seconds on J4. Let's, let's push and poke. Push and poke. Hold on. Guys, push and poke. We have... Kaisa and Zera. Ow. That's what I'm talking about, man. Blink, blink, blink. Dodge the charm. Hello. Ow. We really just need the mid wave. Man, I shouldn't have built Borg. I'll hit this turret if no one else will. Moving. Q. Smack, 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 smack. Q. W. Moving. Smack. Q. Smack, smack, smack. Q. Smack, smack, smack. Q. Smack, 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 smack. Smack, smack. Q. Smack, smack, smack. GG. Does anyone know how to end the game? <laughs> hey, does anyone in this fucking game know how to end the game but me? Right, so you push the lanes. And then you poke the bad guy, and then you hit their turret. Duh. I got a pike walking bot lane with the Tia, Matt. You know, let me do it weird. Final score, 3, 5, and 8. It's a hard carry right there. Final damage dealt, less than the enemy's support. Hell yeah. Alrighty, GG. Make sure to follow for more 3 and 5 Belveth gameplay. Peace.